So I had a patient come in the other day and she had been told by many other practitioners over the years that she had a short leg. Measure her legs when she was lying down and because of that they put a heel lift and she was never sure whether or not the heel lift was helping and she wanted to know what my opinion was. And I said, well, there's a few things I ask and I check before I put a heel lift in, so let's talk about it. Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Ed Debu, physical therapist out of Integrated Physical Therapy in Bellingham, Washington. In this video, we're gonna talk about this supposedly short leg that we have and whether or not we need a heel lift. A couple things first. When a patient comes in and tells me they have been told they have a short leg, I wanna find out whether or not it's a functional short leg or a structural short leg. Structural short leg is there some anatomical reason why that leg is short. Maybe as a kid, when you were still growing, you had a broken bone or you damaged the growth plate. So I'll ask them, has that ever happened? Did you ever break your femur, break your tibia? Most of the time, they will say no. If they do, then I know that they may have a structural short leg. Another reason for a short leg from a structural standpoint might be a scoliosis. And so I'll take a look at their spine. And if they have a significant scoliosis, then that also can alter the position of the pelvis and make it appear like we have a short or long leg and therefore maybe a heel lift is appropriate. In my clinical experience, almost nine out of 10 people that come in with a short leg, it's a functional short leg. And I'll tell you the things that I check. This is just my opinion. There's a muscle here, one on each side. It's called the quadratus lumborum. And it lives right in through here. So this is the 12th rib that attaches onto the lumbar spine, comes on down through here, and attaches onto the ilium. So we have one that sits here and one that sits over here. You want to palpate the QL on yourself. You find your 12th rib. It's pretty easy to find the lower part of the rib cage. And then you work your way in, and usually, in this little spot right here is where we have the trigger point. And a lot of times, if you have tenderness in there, then chances are you have a little tightness or a little trigger point in the quadratus lumborum. Just for argument's sake, we're gonna say that we have tightness in the QL because that's what I see mainly instead of a short leg. Let's pretend the right QL is a little tighter. And this guy is fused, so you have to use your imagination. But if this is tighter, I want you to visualize that this side is a little hiked up. So if I had tightness in my right QL, and this is the top of my ilium, I want you to imagine that this right side is being hiked up. And if my right hip is hiked up, and if someone was to check that, if I was lying down on a table, it's gonna look like I have a short leg. So these are a couple things that I want you to do. If you feel like you have a short leg, and you have a heel lift, and it's working out well for you, and it's taken away all your pain, then leave it, you're probably fine. But if you have a short leg, and you have a heel lift, or you've been told that you need a heel lift, but you're not 100% sold that that's what you need, or it's a practical standpoint as well too, having to pull that heel lift out and putting it in all your shoes. So what I do when a client comes in with a supposedly short leg, I check the QL. I have the advantage of palpating it 26 years of experience, and so I'm gonna be able to tell. Like I said, nine times out of 10, on the short side, there's gonna be a tight QL, which is giving us the appearance of a short leg. I'm actually tied up through here. That's causing my pelvis to shift. And if someone's looking at my heels, they're gonna say, boy, Ed, our short left leg, let's go ahead and put a heel lift underneath there. And that just locks the dysfunction in. And most of the time what happens is, is it feels better initially, but then down the road, you may develop some sort of random pain. Well, gosh, why is my opposite knee hurting? Or why is my ankle hurting? And I really believe in less is more. Less orthotics, less braces. If we can try to get our structure as resilient as we can naturally, then we're just better off in the long run. We just need less appliances to kind of get the job done. So if you suspect that you might have uh, irritation of the QL, and if you're seeing a physical therapist or your massage therapist, perfect. Just talk to them about it and ask them and say, hey, what do you think about the QL? Is it possible that my QL is tighter on one side? Uh, you might have some dysfunction at this 12th thoracic segment. So if you're a therapist out there or you're a massage therapist out there, you may have to manipulate that T12 in order to get that to move a little bit better. But let's say you're not seeing someone, you're stuck at home because of COVID or something. A couple things I recommend. Number one, see if you're tender in that area. Remember where the trigger point lies. Right here, follow the 12th rib, dig down deep into here. Let's say, for example, you are a little tender there. 
you need a lacrosse ball or a tennis ball, and you're just going to find that spot. Now you can do it lying down if you want to and see if you can put a little bit of pressure on there. The pressure you're going to put is enough to be a little face cringing, but it shouldn't be take your breath away. If you can't lie down on it because the pressure is a little bit too much, lean against a wall. So find the sore spot. You're going to put that ball right there. You're going to come against the wall and you're going to lean on it a little bit until you can kind of get right into that spot. And I want you to put pressure on that trigger point for no more than about a minute to a minute and a half. And you can move around a little bit or you can just hold steady pressure into that area. Then what I'll do is I'll put a link, I'll put a link right up here to a stretch. So first you do the trigger point work and then you follow up by the stretch. And then as you're doing the stretch, compare left side to right side. And a lot of times, for example, if my right side's tighter, as I'm doing that mermaid or that QL stretch, I'll feel, wow, yeah, it is quite a bit tighter on this side. So my advice would be then to do the trigger point and the stretch both sides, but trigger point and stretching, and see if you can normalize the tenderness and the mobility of that QL. So when you come in here and you can palpate that muscle and you're like, you know, I don't really notice any particular tenderness on one side versus the other. And then have your, your spouse, your partner, kind of take a look at your legs and see if there is a difference with that. And if it kind of normalizes, then probably you have a functional short leg and you don't need that heel lift. If you found the video helpful and informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and ding, turn on your notifications so you never miss another video. Remember, this is just my opinion. I don't need any nasty comments from people who believe in heel lifts. All I say is that I just check the QL to make sure it's balanced from side to side. If I have clients that love their heel lift, trust me, I don't take them out. But nine times out of 10, the heel lift is not necessary unless it's a structural change. Most of the times it's not, it's usually functional. And usually the QL is a culprit, and sometimes even there's hip tightness as well on that same side. All right, if you have any questions, please let me know. And if not, good luck and get rid of the heel lifts if you don't need them, right? Why, it's just a hassle, you, know, you just don't need them. If you don't need them, just get rid of them, right? You know.